All right, lots to talk about in entertainment, and who better to fill us in on all that than Jake Hamilton? <laughs> you like that? I like the camera switch. Yeah, exactly, Jake. So, uh, first of all, Fast and Furious, this is what, the seventh one? Seventh one, and they just keep getting faster and more furious. And more people want to see it. Well, yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, this one, we've been reporting on the box office news on this movie for a few weeks now. It's pretty astro astronomical numbers. Obviously, it's very popular. But uh, here's the deal. This weekend, it became the fastest film to ever gross $1 billion at the global box office. That's a pretty incredible feat. It only took the film 17 days to cross that coveted billion-dollar mark. The record was previously held by a few different films. It took the Avengers, Avatar, and the final Harry Potter film each 19 days to cross that mark. However, it still has a little bit to go if, if it wants to be the highest grossing film ever. Both Avatar and Titanic each made more than two billion dollars. Okay, so. uh, that's crazy. And then um, it's supposed to be a, a big news for Batman yeah. and Superman yeah. fans, Yeah, today right? was supposed to be a big day for Batman and Superman fans, though someone sort of spoiled it last week. We were supposed to get our first look at the new Batman versus Superman teaser today, but after a pirated version leaked online last week, Warner Brothers went ahead and released a clean version early. However, Chicago is, which you can see right there, Chicago is shot here, still one of the few cities hosting a special IMAX screening of the trailer tonight. Those attending will see some all new footage and will be treated to some swag. But if you don't already have tickets to that event at Navy Pier tonight, I'm sorry, they are all spoken for. All right, let's go back to what we're looking at yeah. right now, the Chicago skyline. How is that connected? What's the basis of our city in this movie, and what, what does well, that Well, it's not actually Chicago. It's, it's, we're serving as Metropolis. Right. So we have served as Gotham City before. Now we're serving as Metropolis. A lot of us got a sight of, uh, of you know, the, the Cape Crusader when they were shooting here a few months ago. There's Ben Affleck, the new Batman. So it's going to be a different story than we're used to seeing. It's going to be very interesting to see these two pitted up against each other. So basically they're using our wonderful skyline as sort of the backdrop for their movie. Yes, and, and then like many yeah. directors do they didn't they then destroy it yes like you do but then it bounces back yeah to exactly yeah it's amazing how that happens town. yeah all right uh, and finally while the world was celebrating the release of the Star Wars episode 7 trailer last week mm -hmm. a new Star Wars trailer leaked last night forget this a different Star Wars film this one is called Star Wars Rogue one. Have you wow, heard about this? That's a lot right. to keep yeah, track of here. Alright, yeah. this film is part of what is being called the Star Wars Anthology. It's a series of films that will dive deeper into the Star Wars universe, but will take place outside of that traditional Skywalker centric storyline that we're used to. The Rogue One trailer leaked after it premiered at a Star Wars convention last night. The film is set to be released next year and will take place before episode four and will follow an X-Wing squadron. Get this, some other rumored yeah. anthology films, a potential flashback story of a young Han Solo, and potentially a young Boba Fett. Really? Yeah, so just... Okay. Phew, There's lots going on. There's a there. lot going yeah. on. It yeah. is a great time to be a film nerd. Hey, let's go back to the first topic you tackled there, Fast and yeah. Furious. Why is this one, among all of them, such a hit? You know, I think, for lack of a better reason, there's that nostalgia of this is the last time we're going to see Paul Walker with all of them. Okay. Um, they really, you know, I think it's sort of like what we experienced whenever The Dark Knight came out after Heath Ledger passed away. You just sort of want to pay tribute, and, uh, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a great movie. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. That answers that.